Welcome to our backyard. This is the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We are two friends having a discussion after everyone else has passed out or gone to bed. Grab a drink and listen as we discuss everything from automation, space exploration, and why the meaning of life is 42. While all our world leaders gather at the World Economic Forum in Davos, we're here to discuss what's on all of our minds, the Dark Ages. Before we get into the causes, the end, are we in the new Dark Ages? Mike, how are you doing? What are you drinking? Drinking something very appropriate for the Dark Ages. I'm drinking some Tito's vodka. And uh, Nick, I'm a little nervous on this one. But what about you? How are you doing and what are you drinking? Also somewhat appropriate, as my usual, some rogue dead guy ale, because we talk about a lot of dead people. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a weird one, Nick, because many of us might know about medieval ages, castles, maidens, knights, etc., etc., but a question arose amongst the two of us of, how did we get out of the Dark Ages and medieval ages? It turns out it's a little more complicated... And also a little bit more simpler than I thought. But I think the first place to start off is when did the dark slash medieval ages start? And just a little asterisk, medieval ages and dark ages are both different things. They overlap, but they're not all the same. But both start with the fall of ancient Rome. Rome was in disarray. The capital moved to Constantinople. The emperor, years prior, switching to Christianity. The empire in shambles. Then, in 476 AD, Rome herself was sacked. And with it, the spirit and the empire itself. All of Rome, one of the most powerful empires the world's ever seen, came to a crash. And with Rome fallen, so did parts of its empire and every country it touched. Which, at the time, didn't be most of Europe. And with Rome gone and her armies no longer bring stability to the regions and stability for trade, allow for science and societies to grow, and to disarray, Europe fell. Nick, I can't help but think of a mighty python of, what did the Romans ever do for us? Well, they made aqueducts. It's safe to go outside at night. It's, uh, boy, it holds more true after the sacking of Rome. I guess I guess you only miss it once it's gone. Yeah, but besides that, what did the Romans do? Education. All right, that's pretty good. <laughs> but with Rome now gone, all that power, it created a void. And civilizations, other cultures, other kingdoms, all fought to fill that void. You have to imagine... This was an empire where if I wanted to send a letter from Constantinople to the Strait of Gibraltar, I could. Now all of a sudden, the country is fractured. It's different kingdoms over different regions. More pirates, more uh, marauders at night, more robbers on the roads. It's no police, no... There's no structure, no order. And while this was happening, kingdoms and families fighting for power, the Catholic Church began to rose. Christianity only being, well, Christianity started technically 500 years earlier, but wasn't absorbed by the masses until, what, 300, 200 AD? So, still relatively new, the Catholic Church began to rose, and from this chaos, began to take power. But I think it's a good point before we get any farther, Nick, to tell the difference between the Medieval Ages and the Dark Ages. So, the Medieval Ages is between 500 AD to 1450 AD. These dates are completely debatable, but it's somewhere around this time. It's much like politics with history. It's There's a lot of our inner argument in, in fighting. But the Dark Ages lasted from 500 AD to about 1000 AD. Now, the reason why they call the Dark Ages the Dark Ages wasn't because the people in this time actually called it the Dark Ages. Not that the people would disagree with the name, but... Yes, it wasn't invented until later. Yeah, uh, the main people talking about it were philosophers during the Enlightenment. They created anti-Catholic propaganda, which to help the idea that early medieval ages was a bad time, that the Catholic Church was bad at their job of ruling. And also historians kind of coined 
dark ages because so much non-growth happened so lack of culture lack of writing lack of artwork lack of just how everyday people lived it kind of made this dark spot that in history of what happened during this time period but the culture the learning it all went downhill as soon as rome fell and i'll be honest with you nick when catholic church catholic church rose it didn't exactly rise right away yeah i mean there's this slow rise and also uh, the people who use the term dark ages well the the time definitely wasn't light in any sense of the word I do think they wanted to make the current time that they were living in the, the a new renaissance of enlightened thinking seem even better by making the past seem even worse. So there's a little bit of a motive there in, in calling the Dark Ages the Dark Ages. Again, not that they were not dark. Oh, I completely agree that we are cunning, kind of shitting on people in the past, saying that we are above them and how barbaric they were, but... To go on what you're saying, Nick, with how dark it was, it was dark because of economics and creativity. I mentioned the creativity part, the lack of writings, the paintings, the different cultures. But the economics, to me, was the biggest hit and the reason why these dark times were dark times. You have to imagine, Rome solidified the area controlled with trade routes, roads. It was, you know, kind of safe to go out at night. It had, you know boats coming in from different countries to bring in goods it had entire wagon trains to bring furs from the north to the south spices from the east to the west all that was gone now it was if anyone's ever had a deal with trade overseas in international trade it's that kind of a nightmare times 10 because now you have different currencies people might kill you different standards economic nightmare and not to mention the trade routes now completely in disarray roads not being kept up ports falling apart ports switching hands between families constantly so one day it's safe to sail from carthage to italy next day you can't sail from italy to carthage it's an economic nightmare because of everyone's just uncertain everyone's panicking at this moment everyone's grasping for power yeah and also not only the economic times, but just the quality of life declined. You're talking about like hygiene. The Roman Empire was a relatively clean empire to be to live in, with bathhouses and aqueducts Dark running Age, water. Yeah, Dark Ages were not that. If if you were lucky, you could wash and shit in a stream, and if you were like a royal and you had a castle, you could shit out your castle into your moat. But it wasn't like uh it wasn't like the past, which is weird. Like we went really went backwards and all our hygiene led to many different plagues and diseases. I mean pretty much everyone had lice and fleas and all the gross stuff. People didn't shave or just plenty of everything that was supposed to be clean was the opposite of that. Well, before we into diseases and plagues, Nick, I'd like to talk about the feudal system because that feudal system pretty much created huts for people to live together at close quarters in dirty environments, which I think was a big factor of why diseases rose during the Dark Ages throughout Europe. Yeah, I let's get into it. I do want to, before I forget, I just want to say, so this does tie into feudalism, the average like town size decreased, so you're... Like a Roman town would be a couple thousand people, but a large town in the Dark Ages was like 2,000 people for a large town. And it's crazy to me that diseases could spread that rampantly at a time before automobiles in towns that rarely hit 2,000 people. You'd think with everyone being so isolated, diseases wouldn't spread as fast. Yeah, I mean, what's like an like a long distance to... March in one day would be like 20 miles but like these are yeah that's just that's just amazing how quickly we went downhill and a way that we went downhill is I'll touch on it later but the middle class fell which now created this entire new economic situation in a panicking Europe which brought into the feudal system feudal system for those who don't know is pretty much you have a lord 
who owns all the land, and some serfs who work the land for some coin and to live on it. And it's it's like a, I don't know if you agree with this, Nick, but like a step above slavery. It's not quite slavery, but it's not quite good. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd agree with that. It kind of, to me, what it what I think about and kind of to understand it is how in Europe, hunting isn't really big because hunting was something that's only for the upper class. So you see a deer, that's that's your lord's deer. In the United States, you see a deer, you're like, oh, that's, that's my deer. <laughs> yeah. Um, another big part is in feudalism, it was very rare for a person to leave home, very rare for a person to start up their own business, and it was rare for them to ever own their own property or land, which is very nervesome as we get as we move slowly towards uh, talking about modern era. But uh, feudalism, I think, was a big influence on diseases and culture and mindset simply because, one, now with countries kind of locking their borders and people living together in close quarters like on feudalism lamb in the villages, you have a less flow of ideas coming in now, less trades being learned, less trades going outward. You also now, like Nick, you were talking about, we can maybe transition to there, is all these people on top of each other not moving. And for some reason, working back, I don't know how we went like, oh, hygiene, you know, we learned how to make soap. We, we now have aqueducts to bring in fresh water. We have an idea of a sewer system. Let's just forget all of that and shit in a bucket in the corner. And uh, yeah, let's sit there and get ranched before throwing it out onto the streets. Into to talk about just like how extreme feudalism is to stay warm if you went into like your lord's wood and picked up sticks like you could be killed those sticks are for the lord and they're not for you like you pretty i mean like you said just a step above slavery like you couldn't pick up sticks to burn to stay warm in the woods I'm not talking about chopping down trees i'm just talking about the sticks that fall naturally through decay that is I didn't, I've not come across that. I feel like that's like in France or Germany for some reason. Probably. I know what happened in what is now the United Kingdom for sure, but I'm pretty, I'm sure it happened elsewhere as well. Yeah. Needless to say, it's not a great time to be a average citizen. I honestly, Nick, I'll say the average citizen's possibilities in class declined with the fall of Rome. But even. Okay, so hypothetically, say you're one of the like 1%. You are the royal. You get to wash a couple times a month, maybe? I mean, it's not like your situation drastically improves. You get food, you know, you have more freedoms, obviously, but it's not like it was this great time, you know? It's Well, I want to play devil's advocate because, yes, this is a bad time, but it's not quite as bad as everyone makes it out because you have to imagine this is when castles are being built castles are a huge part of when we think medieval era it's also very economically straining to do so like you have to have pretty good well money and you need some trade skills to get into there uh i also want to point out we've we had glasses being invented uh distilling of alcohol starts being invented uh, windmills for the first time start getting developed. But this is all during the medieval ages. In the dark ages, not so much inventions are happening. So again, dark ages, just want to clarify as, as we continue on this. Dark ages is from about 500 AD to 1000 AD. Medieval ages is from 580 to 1500 AD. So just keep that in mind. But you are right, Nick, of how... It's kind of shitty to be all around because even if you are a lord, you probably still have a king. And even if you're the king, you still have to bow down to the Catholic Church at this time. So as this dark time, as you said, lo fucking lice suck, Nick. I've seen people with lice. I luckily have never had lice. Uh, they It just looks god awful. But as the Catholic Church rose and they rose in the power. Have you seen like the lice queen? Like it's a big fucking bug. It's not what I thought of when i think of lice i think of small little like wormy animals this was a f big fucking bug honestly when i think of lice i think of almost like dandruff 
That's what I think of too. And it's it's not. It's really not. But while these people were bringing pigs inside their house so they don't freeze to death and the pigs don't freeze to death, the Catholic Church kept rising. And as the Catholic Church kept rising to power, well, like they said, it's good to be the king. The Catholic Church started to, started to decide what was allowed and what wasn't allowed. And they started to have heavy influence over art and education. Cultures and societies all across Europe, which are now Christian-based societies, all were dictated to the ideology of their faith rather than personal glory like it was done by the ancient Greeks and ancient Romans. So much so where schools kind of died off. And the only way to truly receive an education was through the church. You lost oneself, but gained it in faith. It's a quote. I can't remember who it's by, but boy, it's it's quite true. And as the Dark Ages proceeded, and the again, these are pretty gloomy times. Grant, well, I do want to point out, during the Dark Ages and medieval, time, medieval times, people think of barbarians cutting off people's heads and stuff like that. There wasn't that much more killing than any normal time in history. It was honestly just more writing, trading, and culture. I don't know if you saw similar things with that, Nick. Yeah, just normal small conflicts here and there. There's some kind of fucked up torture, inquisition kind of stuff in the latter half, but you're going to have that. With... Well, maybe let's jump forward to work ourselves backwards. Nick, you were talking about diseases, lice, which lice still kind of freak me out a little bit, and it's... That just sounds awful to be trapped inside of a house covered in fleas, lice, it's too cold, and it's illegal to pick up sticks. But it gets worse for them, Nick, doesn't it? Well, yeah. So real quick on the lice and stuff. So basically, people slept on straw bedding and didn't really change it out. And it provided a really good habitat for anything that preys on humans, really, lice, fleas. And people would try and curb it by put like herbs and stuff in there, similar lavender, whatever kind of bullshit. Uh, Really no match for lice and fleas. But uh, it wasn't the only major pest that we dealt with. The Black Death, the Black Plague, began in 1346. And it could have started, could have killed people earlier in the Middle East. And I don't know if you ran into that, Mike. The plague of Justinia. Uh, Justinian. Yes. Uh, not to jump around too much, but I think a big reason why I came back to Europe was because of the Crusades. That makes sense. Because I believe that I'll talk about the Crusades in a bit, but I believe the Crusades ended in 1296, and that kind of set up a new trading route and such like that. But yeah, Black Death was a. Uh, <laughs> it's got its name for a reason. So. Pope Gregory came to power and he was he released this whole fucking book about how these German witches were doing all these acts with black cats and people were like let's just start killing these cats you know get rid of these witches well wasn't the right move there so cats kill rats and rats <laughs> do also spread diseases so that probably led to it wasn't the only reason but it was just a uh, another reason that the plague got so big wait nick you're telling me if i kill the thing that was killing varmints more varmints will be around now we didn't do pope gregory didn't really do a good scientific study there's no control group here but what we do know from the data is that destruction of black cats leads to an increase in rat population which, and this could be correlation, not causation, so I don't want to jump the gun, leads to a lot of people dying of the Black Plague. Uh, Nick, I got some figures for you, if uh, you're interested. In about 1346, the Black Deaths kind of started ma- throughout all of Europe. And in its time period, it killed an estimated between 30 and 60% of all of Europe's population. That's a lot. That's a fucking lot. And so when people ask, why are cats still around? I guess this is why cats are still around. <laughs> the Egyptians knew. They, they, they knew. We had it right from the start. 
Well, just to back travel, because this happened, the Black Plague in 1346, I want to back travel a little bit, Nick, if you don't mind, to the back to the Dark Ages. So still pre-1000 AD. And 1000 AD, uh, around there, 750 to 1000, we start to see a shift. I have a hypothesis. I cannot back it up. But all of a sudden, the Dark Ages started to become just the normal medieval ages we think about. My hypothesis is this is at about 500 it took about 500 years after the fall of rome for other countries other families other kingdoms to solidify their power and control of the region to bring order to their areas and once order and power structures were developed is when trade and large economic projects started to form now a big project of which i'm thinking of which pulled europe out of the dark ages besides trade routes which i want to talk about more because i think trade routes are huge and the resurgence of middle class which i think is even bigger is war war to me is a great way if your country if your continent is in a debt or in a bad spot start a war with someone else because some has if you're if you're in the white house right now turn off the podcast Oh, uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, well, let, let's be honest, Nick. No one ever listens to us. Fair enough. You're not. You're not wrong. <laughs> but a lot of historians have the Dark Ages ending around a thousand A.D. That's because they have more information, more growth and education, more culture and civilization. But to me, I think it's the beginning of the war path. I think it takes from about five hundred A.D. to a thousand A.D. for kingdoms and countries to form to solidify to allow trade routes those trade routes lead to lead to money more more trade means more money now they all of a sudden they want even more money was a great way to get more money war i mean that's how america got out of the great depression is because they entered world war ii europe to me at least partly speaking is a major reason why i left the dark ages and into the rest of the medieval ages was because of the Crusades. The first crusade, Nick, started in 1096 AD. Just, I don't know about you, Nick, but those numbers seem to line up pretty goddamn well. I mean, that does make sense. I had a different hypothesis, and I want to preface this with, uh, I didn't really come across this, but this was just my theory. And I guess it depends. What? When do you think the... What did you have the date for the Dark Ages ending? A uh, thousand AD. One thousand AD. That's what I. That's matter. what I saw. Historians. To me, it ended a little bit uh, later. Uh, to me, it ended about eleven uh, eleven fifty AD. But historians have it as ending in a thousand AD. So to me, I kind of see the Dark Ages as a warning of what happens when one soul group has power. And you have the church ruling over everything. And I think, to me, it starts to end when people start to question the church. And probably the best example of that would be, like, Martin Luther. But that's way later than the Dark Ages. And that's 400 years after they're calling the Dark Ages to end. But he wasn't the 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 first. He was probably he was the, one of the last ones, but just the most famous. And I think as the sway of the church started to fail people were able to kind of move you know become more free that's kind of how i saw it but i didn't really see anyone else see it that way can i play devil's advocate i feel like in this case it would be heaven's advocate but continue oh hell no let's let's be honest i'm going to hell honestly i think you're kind of half right to me it's almost like the dark ages ended when the catholic church decided to be less about faith and more about economics when they started caring about more about having their own papal army when they started about caring having their own trades their own taxes their own banks that's when i start seeing the europe starting to leave the dark ages so uh you have kingdoms in france which caspians caspiads i can't remember their title they kind of solidified what would be modern day france you uh england germany italy you have all these knights you have all these kings they all still have to kind of bother the pope or else be excommunicated i mean 
you have Charlemagne, for example, like even him being the Holy Roman Emperor, uh, Otto the first from Germany, the Holy Roman Emperor. When the church, in my opinion, started going less faithy, less burning people at the stakes, granted they've done it all throughout history, and went a bit more money based, is when I saw a greater growth. And that's why I think about war. One, it's worked for the United States in history. It's worked for other countries in history. To me, it makes sense to be the Dark Ages way of getting out. Because the, the Crusades went from 1096, ending about 1291. But the Crusades also opened new trade routes, new cultures, old ideas. Because uh, a lot of the ancient Greek writings and ancient Roman writings were destroyed because they were heresy. But during uh, Islam's time, they copied notes, they wrote down copies of it, they had some originals, they had all these ideas. And while Europe was in shambles during the Dark Ages, Islam was going through its Golden Age. Uh, I, I, will, I want to talk about Islam's Golden Age in, uh, no, in a bit, but I, that's my hypothesis on your, not my, my hypothesis, my tweak on your idea for myself if that makes sense because i was I, I like your idea that it's when the catholic church wasn't god himself but i think i i don't see the catholic church going away until like the 1600s if i'm honest with you well i don't think they i mean they it's never gone away i would i just think that it's when they they lost power when power went from centralized to decentralized is and I think there's a lot that there's multiple factors that end the dark ages. You have an increase in trade and trade and cultures, like you talked about, more record keeping, kind of the age of enlightenment coming afterwards. You know, after the fall of the Roman Emperor, r travel routes were a shit show. And so because of that, people stopped trading, traveling. You know, under the feudal system, there weren't store, you know, storefronts or whatever you call it. Like you didn't have the ability trades. to travel. Yeah, and so there was no exchange of ideas. You know, we talk about how the Dark Ages there wasn't a lot of innovation, and I think that's true. But it's also it could could be because everyone was just trying to not die. But also maybe there was innovation and just wasn't recorded because it wasn't. There, there was no, there wasn't as much travel. I mean, there was innovation all throughout the Dark Ages, but maybe there was more. It's, it's a notable lack. I don't know. You might have different information than I came across. During the Dark Ages, I'm more inclined to agree with your initial statement of they were just trying to survive. Like uh, it's from 580 to 1080. It was not about creating. It was about survival. Afterwards is when I see the creativity. When we started, uh, not when we started, when the Europeans started invading the Middle East for holy lands from crusades, et cetera, et cetera. And they were like, wait, they got all our books here. Yeah, no, for, for uh, during this entire time for the Dark Ages to Medieval Ages is Islam's Golden Age, which is utterly fascinating to me because I feel like there's not enough in the Western world written about it. Not only do you have ancient writers and books, but the entire time we're living in the feudal system in Europe. In, uh, in the Islamic world, they're coming up with new mathematics, new inventions. They're flourishing during this time. Islam's golden age, pretty much their renaissance was during the darkest pages, darkest ages in European history. So to me, when we started going to war, we started seeing like, huh, they got some good ideas. Not to mention China making all those like uh, gunpowder, uh, 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 paper currency, all these different things. And the Islamic world kind of being the in-between Europe and China, a lot of ideas flowing through. And the reason why I see this as being a huge influence because windmills are first introduced in Europe in 1270, mechanical clocks in 1280. I think glasses were somewhere around that time period. It all seems to happen during or after the Crusades. It seems like when we started invading and setting up new economic trades, the Silk Road, I mean, Marco Polo himself was, what, uh, was in the 1200s. I don't remember when he lived and died, but he, I think, was it the 1200s? I can't quite remember when Marco Polo ever died, but we've had explorers going out, setting up new trade. I don't think people understand. 
as long as the money's flowing, everybody's happy. And when that money wasn't flowing during the dark times, when people were living hand to mouth, you couldn't hunt deer, you couldn't get fire sticks, you're getting destroyed by lice and, and ticks and fleas. It's It's got awful. But all of a sudden, you can travel now, you get more merchants, more merchants mean more middle class, more middle class means more trade, more commodity goods. You're not just buying food. You're buying cloths, you're buying artwork, you're buying all these different things. And Nick, I mentioned a little earlier, liquor finally makes its way to Europe. And I did a little research. I figured you might like this because we both like liquor. But liquor, first made in Babylonian times for perfume. Liquor for distillering from drinking was first done by the Mongolians through freezing distillering. So they freeze it and separate the alcohol and water. Heat distilling was by a Yaber ibn Habyan, a Muslim alchemist, which made its way to Europe in the 12th century. So again, we might not have alcohol in prominent culture if it wasn't for the Islamic gold age and the, and the Europeans crusading their way through. That seems so contrary. So you're telling me that the Islamic golden age, famous, famously anti-liquor, is responsible for the presence of liquor everywhere I go? Yes, but it's not famously anti-liquor. Um, during the Islamic golden age, a lot more things were less taboo. Uh, I mean, you had the guy make his, the first parachute ever and jump off a giant like obelisk and survive. Uh, but it was more about math and science and less about faith. Faith was more of a bipart. The best way I compare it, here too is the golden age of islam was the renaissance of europe that's the best way i can describe it where yeah you have some artists committing sodomy but we can kind of look the other way kind of situation there's a, a bunch of easy jokes there about the church but we're gonna oh this is so hard <laughs> well not as hard as a catholic priest with a little boy anyhow uh, another thing I want to add on to this medieval age is kind of being a dark period. Uh, Nick, I don't know if you came across all the, besides the Black Death, but the famine that would come along with a mini ice age that happened in about 1300. Yes, I did. Ooh, please take it away because I did a little research on it. Not that much on it. I started a book on the subject and didn't finish it. So here we go. Um, Just like high school all over again. Yeah, so around 1300, the world kind of cooled down a little bit. And from what I understand, it's due to change in the ocean current. And we kind of touched on this in, was it sea level rise? I believe so. About how so. ocean current plays a role in the temperature of the earth, uh, if you're curious about that. But just like all things, pretty much, except for humans, you can put on clothes, different plants, survive in different temperatures plants can't move very well when it gets too cold for them they just don't grow or they die and that led to a famine just because there's less food around you know what i love is that famine that ice age it started from 1300 it would end in about 1850 so last quite a bit but that famine started just when the black plague was just about to happen about 50 years later nick weird coincidence don't you think because nothing says it's the end of the world well, when all your friends are getting black pussy uh, blisters and dying and uh, the Catholic Church saying you're all going to hell. And all of a sudden, quite literally, there's frost, so you can't grow plants. Looks like hell did freeze over. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's uh, again, not a good time to be alive. I don't know if we can stress that enough. Yeah. It's uh, – and this is well, – Another the thing, too, is with with famine – when your body doesn't have enough nutrients to survive, your immune system is one of the first things to suffer, which is why we, and by we, I mean the royal we as human beings, regularly blame plagues on the Jews who had a very clean culture, washed hands, all that stuff, washed themselves. They tended to get the plague less, and so everyone thought they spread the plague or it was their plague, which down the road would lead to the Inquisitions, 
a bunch of other stuff. Not not good. I mean, you dodged one bullet, but yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think I I I I always feel really bad for the Jewish people because it's like they try, but they try it, so hard and they they dodge like they always dodge the first thing, and then something comes. It's like they're always people throughout time have really hated the Jews. Like they've had the worst luck, man. There's and even South Park when they're like, oh, and the right religion is Mormon. On Earth, someone was like, and the wrong religion was Judaism. Like those guys are gonna have to go through hell every couple of years. Yes, but I also want to caveat. This is technically when all this plague, famine, disease, uh, uh system of government is in place this is all technically after the dark ages which is really funny to me like this is all all these bad things of black plague you know spanish inquisition massive famine ice age this is all the non-dark ages which i find hilarious because to me this is this is also dark ages seems pretty dark yeah it seems really dark yeah, we have more knowledge. There's more culture. There's more written stories and artwork. But it's uh, it's not great to be alive during this time period. But to bring it back around a little bit to both Dark Ages and Medieval Ages is the lack of the middle class. I Again, I think money in most worlds make the world go round. Money, see, when it, money fell, we had feudalism which made pretty much a su- one super rich family and a bunch of poor families you were either in or you were poor yes which made the middle class disappear but when you had ancient rome under rule you had more potters more sea merchants more stone masons you had more middle class kind of jobs with more middle class made a stronger economy during the dark pages and medieval you're allowed ages. specialization with the middle class. You don't have ruler and farmer. You have leader, you have farmers, you have your specializations, whether it be, you know, making tools, carpenters, whatever, but not not every single person is focused on just surviving. I mean, definitely a lack of artisan jobs like paintings poets and stuff like that i again i want to be very blunt is there were still a lot of going on i mean still inventions being made blacksmiths still creating stuff like that it just seems to me almost more localized it was not an expansion of ideas not an expansion of economy so a blacksmith could maybe over the winter make extra items and be able to trade it along the road so it would transfer goods to a different region and country that seemed to happen less. The It happened to be like, make the tools we need for our village right here, nowhere else. Because that's the resources advocate to us. That was the money we have to us. It wasn't as easy as to simply get on a ship or sell it to people sailing somewhere else to go, so they go sell it somewhere else. There was a less exchanging of goods, both the knowledge form and physical form. At least that's what that's what I was seeing throughout the Dark Ages and Medieval Ages. Yeah, I, I'd agree. It just wasn't... There was innovation. There was, you know, classical works that were created, but they weren't... If they didn't get circulated very well or, or whatever, it wasn't... Uh, it was completely separate from the late Middle Ages or the, the Renaissance, kind of, where we, we talk about a period of great ideas. And I think that's where why the term the Dark Ages is still used, even after it's kind of sort of been debunked, right, by historians. They don't like to re- use the term Dark Ages. Yeah, it seems for historians, as soon as they start getting more information, they stop calling the Dark Ages. Like, they simply use Dark Ages as a physical blackout spot. Like, they don't really know much information. Like, And we didn't talk about it here, but Dark Ages is is a general term usually to refer to the aftermath of a fall of a great civilization when there's less recordings in history about what happened compared to during the it wouldn't be rise but during the time that whatever civilization was around during 
the fall of Rome, what also fell with the Roman Empire was their language. Latin was spoke universally throughout Europe, and all of a sudden this was gone. There was no universal language. It was every... It, could you imagine trying to trades from all across different countries and every region speaks a different language that's that's got to be that's got to be astronomically hard that's got to stunt so much growth well even at work i work with a lot of people from mexico and sometimes you'll get someone who's from a tribe that speaks their own dialect and you spend all this time trying to learn spanish and then you try to talk to them and and the uh, Mexicans are like, dude, we, we can't even talk to this guy. So, yeah, I know exactly how they feel. <laughs> that, that, one, that one hurt my brain listening to, Nick. It's like they're speaking the same language, but they can't even understand the same language. Got it. Got it. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a struggle point. I, I, that's a major struggle point. But, yeah, that's how I think most... Of the Dark Ages and historians have the Dark Ages ending with more knowledge being presented to them. And the Enlightenment era has it the Dark Ages simply because the Catholic Church controlled everything that they did and there was less art in the world. I have it kind of as the Dark Ages because it was just a shitty and hard time to live. I don't know about you, Nick, if you have what you have as the Dark Ages as. As how I'd rate it as a time to live, like as to zero to one? Out of 10, I I would not want to live there. Oh, there's a lot of points in history I wouldn't want to live. I, I rate it as, why do you consider these Dark Ages the Dark Ages? I think that the Italians had it right. And when they said it was the Dark Ages due to a lack of records, but not because of a lack of records and ideas, just because of why there was a lack of records and <laughs> ideas. Because this was a fucking struggle. Like, you went from... You went from Rome, where you had leaders, you, yeah, and at the end of the empire, leaders were killing each other left and right, but you had stores, you had different businesses, you had people making food, you had people You were people transporting in the streets. obelisk you from ha- Egypt to Rome. <laughs> yeah, you had aqueducts, like you said, you had bathhouses, you had public entertainment, you had plays, you had uh, gladiators, you had theater you had all this stuff, schools, not just like generic schools. You had good schools, bad schools, like a, a city probably very similar to what we know today minus, you know, the technology. And then it just went away. People were just focused on surviving. And I, I think that's why it's the Dark Ages. And and yes, I understand from a historical standpoint, this follows after every great empire falls, but f- Rome was not just another empire that fell. It was a huge empire that fell. It wasn't a couple of years for this area to recover. It was a long time. And I think that's what made these Dark Ages the Dark Ages. Can't agree with you more. Um, just to throw out some extra information to there. Uh, I find it almost a sad satire, but also kind of funny at the same time. To me, the Islamic Golden Age was a big reason why Europe got out of the medieval ages. But almost like a pendulum, when the medieval ages ended and the Renaissance began, is when the Islamic Golden Ages ended. Now, it wasn't due to Europeans. It was due to the Ottomans and Genghis Khan attacking and invading their countries. And also, uh, a, a someone who had to play a factor in it, he was not the lead factor, but he did play a factor, a Sunni reveal he brought changes encouraging religion not science uh much like the pope did in early catholic church uh a lot less a lot more ideology than than i don't know what to what to say it's just science but to me nick we got out of the dark ages and the medieval ages due to changes of culture middle class and economics and i'm wondering if you got the same idea and knowledge from how we got out of the dark ages so a rise uh, creation of the middle class not the creation economic conditions bringing back the uh, middle class middle class has existed on and off well, in different names yeah, and forms for... but but it was gone during oh, yeah. the dark ages oh yeah definitely gone so a recreate a recreation of the middle class and improving economic conditions and and exchange of cultures slash like science 
Well, I feel like the exchange of cultures was a, a follow on to the improving economic conditions because it's it's hard to. I mean, you're starving, right? You're you're toiling every day for your Lord, and someone hands you, you know, a book you greatest, can't read, <laughs> the greatest piece of you know entertainment. Someone hands you Halo Three and an Xbox. So what, what the fuck are you gonna do with that? Touche. I think it. I think improving economic conditions is probably just like everything. I mean, that's people. When people aren't starving day to day, that improves everything else all around. So I'd say that that'd be the biggest. And whether that was due to new <laughs> due technologies, to. due to war, I know I meant due to, but yeah, you got me. <laughs> so I, I I would agree. Well, with that in mind, there's a question that I think to myself quite often: is Are we currently in another Dark Ages or Medieval Ages? And Before I explain my position on this, Nick, I'm curious on your position on this. Personally, I would say no, but I can see why people would think that. And I could see why people would think we may be heading towards a new Dark Ages. So I I think you may be jumping the gun. It's too early to say. But what do you think, Mike? What is your reasoning for why we're in it? I guess I'll explain my reasoning. I don't think they're one of the things that to me screams dark ages is one power and the dark age the dark ages we talked about that was the church I don't entirely see that I see the formation of it S- middle class I see I can see where you're coming from with there's the fall of the middle class but I I don't think we're in the dark ages yet I still see a lot of innovation that's occurring I still see people able to move class systems. Um, I, so I, I can see why people are saying the warning signs are there, but I'd be curious of if you think we're currently in a dark age. So this is very delicate. I think we're either in the medieval ages where we're almost to the Renaissance or we're at the end of the Roman Empire and almost into the dark ages we're either in the beginning or either at the beginning or we're at the end so you're at we're at any point in history i do agree no, no, with no, that no. statement <laughs> no 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 i think i i think you're taking it too simply i see us as either we just came from a great civilization we expanded too largely and it's now crumbling into our hands in our the sand castle in our hands because of the found we didn't build a foundation which could lead us to the dark ages which or we're at the end where we're in the medieval period we're still not our own culture we're still not enlightened we're still not coming out with event great inventions we're still kind of brutish but we're almost there where we're a little bit more sophisticated a little bit more ideas a little bit a little bit open to creativity we're we're teetering at the point, and to me, it's almost a flip of the coin of which one will end up. It's like, well, history history is going to repeat itself no matter what. But the question is, which direction is the arrow moving? We're either, we either just miss the Dark Ages, because I can certainly, in my mind, count the 20th century as the Dark Ages, with all the world wars, the segregation, all the like just modern colonialism definitely could count that as the dark ages or are we just about to enter the renaissance or are we about to just simply f- like the 20th century was the fall of rome the 21st century is the powers after the fall of rome solidifying power that is getting to enter us in the dark ages much like how the catholic church rose up we're either at that point or the point we're about to enter the renaissance to be honest with you I'm probably leaning towards we're heading more towards the Dark Ages. Um, A big reason why is I'm going, I see feudalism system kind of coming back to first world countries. The feudalism, well, the feudalism system today is kind of like millennial homeownership. Millennial homeownership is down 8.4% as of 2019, so probably even more so. It seems like more people 
Come on, Mike. You know every single millennial bought a house this last two years. Yeah, but how long last it last until it gets the land gets revoked and taken back by their lords at the bank? I, I it's, you raise a good point. Continue. I see more of our generation renting, not owning. That seems a lot like feudalism to me. Of serfs renting the land rather than owning the land. And when I look at Bill Gates buying a shit ton of land, I go, oh, it's the rich owning large portion of the land, which the poor class rents out from. That, to me, is very feudalism, just with a different name and caveats. It's very close. Not exact, but close. And... I can't help but think of a South Park episode of when Butter's dad's working at the Amazon factory. He works all day at the Amazon factory just to come home again, order stuff on Amazon, and have the Amazon packages delivered to his house. That seems like a very vicious cycle, which seems a lot like a serf working the land, you know, uh, taking that well, iron... It's, it's a modern company town, right? Yeah, no, I would agree with that statement. It's a modern company town. That that company town is now the entire country. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that statement. Yeah. Um, I think this... Shit, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And I also think of, unfortunately, the suppression of information. Yes, more information is out there. Mike, we have a ministry of disinformation. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but when researching this, I came across a woman who did a very interesting episode, our, if we're living in the middle of the ages, called uh, Q22. Shout out to her. She brought up a very interesting point, which I didn't think about. Uh, the Brave New World, the philosophy was there'd be so much information, people didn't care about to read about it. And then, um, I'm not quite sure if it was Fahrenheit 451 or a different, maybe it was 1984, it was 1984, Oswell. Uh, Oswell is people would burn books and no longer want to read. And it seems like we're more in the brave new world where we have so much information, it's impossible to process. And even if information is true, you can just suppress the information saying it's blasphemy, it's heresy, much like the Catholic Church did during the Dark Ages and Medieval Ages. They just through things underneath the rug. It seems very similar to me on those points. And not to mention the absolute decline of the middle class. I think I think the keystone factor in every great empire is having a strong middle class. So that's why I lean more towards we're entering the dark ages rather than we're entering a renaissance. And I'm not saying that we can't miss we can't miss it cuz I imagine multiple times in history that They've gone from a dire time to all of a sudden pull it back from the brink of hell. But that's where I'm at, Nick. I will agree with you. There's definitely a a decline of the middle class, it seems like. But there there is and there isn't, right? So me and my wife both work. We both have pretty decent jobs for our area. We live in a pretty rural area with the, like the medium income for our county is like, 60 grand or something it's it's pretty low and we're above that we so we should be in the upper we're only for the state of oregon we're only a couple thousand dollars from being upper class yet we struggle to you know find housing we don't feel like anything is super affordable and so i do think this is the it it seems like there there is either you've made it or you haven't and so i can see why you know you look at a bunch like Business Insider has been documenting the quote unquote decline of the middle class, which they define middle class as with an income 67% to 200% of the overall median household income after it's been adjusted for household size. So if you have, you know, one person in the house who makes 60 grand a year, but it's a two family, you know, it'd be like 34,000 per each people or 60 for the household. So if you have two people who make 60, it's 120,000, not for the household, obviously. So, but the medium income is risen for all classes of households, but the upper income, like household earning has increased, but the middle class, like kind of earning has increased more. So basically what it's, they're saying is that the, the upper middle class is shrinking and the middle class itself is growing, obviously. 
if one of those shrinks, the other is increasing, and that the middle class is grow outpacing the lower class. So to me, it just what I'm reading is that the middle class is the new lower class. Is that everyone is just becoming this quote unquote middle class, but people are who are lower class are becoming middle class, and people who are upper lower class are becoming straight middle class. So we're gonna go from upper class and middle class, and that's gonna be it. When you only have two systems, it's a lot like the feudal system where you've made it or you hadn't. And that that's kind of what it seems to me what they're trying to show, and I can see it. I mean, obviously we're I hate to use this term because I feel like it's so overused. Everyone's like, oh the housing crisis, but the price of housing is pretty crazy right now. Especially if you live in like a major city. And I don't know who who is affording these houses. Like I said, me and my wife make good money for the rural area we live in, and we were regularly like could not buy a house because of how higher people were bidding. So I I don't know where what is going on, but it does feel like everyone is either middle class or rich. To add on to that, Nick, it's much like the medieval ages and dark ages. It's not shitty for everybody. It's just some people have it better than others and i can see a lot with that and what you just said pretty much is just a class shift where like you said the upper middle class upper uh, wealthy are suddenly become the middle class well i'm gonna give you a hint nick most of the people who are right now quite like wealthy and well doers there ain't that many of them so all of a sudden if they shift to the middle class and all the middle class shift to poor there's a lot more poor people than they are middle class people if that shift happens. And an- another big caveat I see is much like with uh, the Catholic Church and religious ideology is, especially with social media in today's era, is it's more about the group than it is about the individual. So group politics. Because when I think of ancient Rome, ancient Greece... I think of heroes, kings. I think of myths and stories. I think of, uh, you know, gladiator. I think of individuals. And that kind of disappeared during the Dark Ages where it was kingdoms and it was all about the Catholic Church. It's like you have to... uh, uh, What's it called when Christians uh, say all their sins to the priest? Uh, confession when you have to do you have to confess all your sins you have to uh, say all your rosemaries all your blood uh, all your uh, hell marys you have to do all x y and z it's all about the term you were looking for is rosaries rosemary is in fact rosaries a a (laughs) herb yeah uh yeah that let's just say i would not fit well in medieval uh ages with uh with my philosophy uh, and you're not lighter than a duck, so you're doubly fucked. Oh, man. Calling out my weight. Fucking Shots love it. fired. That's fine. But anyhow, so I see that more of today of group ideology rather than, rather than individu- individual. Like when I think Renaissance, I think of Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael. I think of... Um, Na- uh, Naples, Florence, Venice, all these kind of like individual cities, individual people. I don't think of a whole collective. When I think of medieval ages, I honestly, the first thing that comes to my mind is the scene in Monty Python where they're just putting the dirt to the side and going, well, I didn't vote for him. Same movie, but I was just thinking of bring out your dead and they're hitting themselves in the bo- in the head with the book. Mm. Yep. Also good. Yeah, but no, we're we're on the exact same page. I just think of someone dirty, a lot of death, a lot of mud, a lot of just filth. I and I I don't think of individuals. And I feel like individualism is almost dying in today's culture. It seems like less myths, less stories, less heroics, but there are lots of asterisks with that to play devil's advocate. Like first thing that comes to my mind is I'm thinking of like Stephen Hawking, Michael Jordan, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm just, you know, some popular names, but I, I, it's hard to say, Nick. It's hard to say, you know, you don't, you don't know if you're in it until after it's over, so to speak, when it comes to the dark ages. I mean, that's exactly, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. You don't know, you, 
you can't say it's a dark ages and I'd say you have to give at least a 200 year after because it follows the fall of a civilization. You don't know when a civilization has fallen. I mean, yeah, Rome got sacked and then the, everyone, every leader started killing each other. We're not there yet. There was a big lead up. Well, let's not talk about the drone strikes, but there was a big lead up to the Rome fall. Like you could you like. It, no, it, I, I, yes, I agree. But if you were. Oh, if I was living in the Roman, area, I'd have no idea. Would you be like, huh, clearly we're about to get fucked over here? I know, probably, probably not. But I imagine some philosophers at the time were like, is this the end? Because this kind of seems like the end. Because I'm going to be honest with you, Nick. Sometimes I feel that. It's like, oh, pull on my collar a little bit. It's like, oh, is this, uh, do I grab the AR and the shotgun and start driving somewhere? Or But is that's this- what people do. We always think it's the end. I mean, we thought it was the end of time when... We're turning from 1999 to 2000. We thought the Mayan calendar ended. It was the end of time. I mean, every single global warming study thinks it's the end of time. As humans, we always think that this is the end. Like when we talked about overpopulation, how many studies came out and said at this point in time, we will hit the end where we won't be able to provide and everyone's going to die. (laughs) It's like every 10 years or something. We can't already provide. (laughs) But we're still doing it. We can provide for a few. Doesn't mean we can provide for the mass. It's I tend, that's why I'm thinking of medieval ages and dark ages. It's like we can provide for a few. We can provide for kings, lords. We can the you know the serfs can barely survive, but that's not living. Like if you're barely surviving or if you're starving to death, I mean, how many people in the world are malnourished right now? I wouldn't count that as survival. I, well, yes, no, sorry, let me phrase that. I wouldn't count that as living. I wouldn't count that as good. As if more people are starving, I'd count that more towards the end of the times. And at times, it doesn't have to be oblivion. And at times, could just be an end of peace, an end of uh, prosperity, an end of culture, an end of uh, of just not having a shitty life like a serf in, in feudalism. I mean, I agree, but how, f- how silly... Are we going to look when we're actually living in the Pax Americana? <laughs> when this is the <laughs> most peaceful time of the United States history for the next couple hundred years. If this is the most peaceful time in, it, in the next couple hundred years for America, I'm very ha- happy I lived it. And either or, even if this is like the most distraught time in America, I'm still happy I'm here, not in the Dark Ages. Yeah, I second that. I'm glad we're not in the Dark Ages again. Once again, glad I don't have lice. Honestly, I just like having so- like soap. Like I don't think people realize how much soap has changed the world. Having soap is awesome. The Romans knew it, <laughs> and then for- and then all of Europe and forgot. Then we all it. forgot about it. It's like it's like Nick. Honestly, it's like the Dark Ages. Is like that password. He's like, no, I'll remember this password. I won't forget it. Fuck. What was that password again? Um, that hits close to home. <laughs> Oh, but I am very cautious to go towards the future. If I had to bet if we're just leaving a dark ages or just entering a dark ages, I would say we're just entering a dark ages, mainly because a few is owning a lot of the land and a few are and a few a, a majority is not owning a land and also a few companies owning majority of the supply of products. And also the information, just the culture and ideas being controlled of you don't know what's true, what's not true. It's uh, it's complicated, Nick. Trying to think of a parallel between this and any point in history where one group ruled all the information. Honestly, probably the Dark Ages with the Catholic Church. There it is. Look at that. Full round circle. I will say I'm a bit of an optimist. I do, optimist and an idiot, I may add, I do see where people, because it's it's not just you, Mike, a lot of people think that we could be heading into a new dark ages. I see the information they're seeing, and, and I do understand where they're coming from. As an optimist, I think we could be entering a, a not dark ages so i just guess just a normal history timeline i don't know what you would call the not dark ages 
Wait, so you don't think we're ent- if we're not get enter instead of the Dark Ages, we're not gonna enter a Renaissance, but just a normal time period? I, I think it's just gonna be a normal time period. I think I, I could see a Renaissance too, because I do see a leaning towards. I mean, look at the the rise of documentaries. Everyone watches documentaries now. People listen to Rogan long form stuff. People want to hear more in depth about the answers. The televised uh, presidential debates are dying because no one wants to listen to two minute, you know, questions. So it, to me, it seems like a longing for information. But I could just be hopeful. No, I I agree. I would also say but that will was, people let us see the that information is what you're saying. Well, that too, but I would also imagine people in the dark ages and medieval ages would be like, "We want to know more. We just don't have the means to." I I imagine they had the same sentiment as we did. Is like, no, we 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 want more stories. We want more creations. We just right now are more focused on whether if our country's going to go war with another country, more con- more if more worried about if the person who is ruling us and leading us is going to hurt us and take away more stuff of our freedoms because we're on their land more of our rights taking away i imagine those are more of their priorities than if a debate or culture like uh, i think we have a lot more content creators on the internet but i imagine the same people were doing the content a thousand years ago they're carving some piece of wood. They were telling some story around the fire. It's just we have it more documented now with the internet. I imagine that really hasn't changed. It's just the whole idea of feudalism is like I'm more worried about if I'm going to see tomorrow. Am I is my country going to get invaded? Is, am I going to be excommunicated? Am I going to get kicked out because of this disease or plague or pandemic ruining my life? Because of my monkeypox. I will say, we talk about records when we talk about the Dark Ages. How much of the internet's really going to be a quote-unquote record, right? I mean, we have... 90% porn. <laughs> quote-unquote content creation. Also, yes. But we talk about records that people are going to find a long time from now. Is this a record? I mean, is our record going to be the internet? I mean, it could be, but I think it's more likely that... It's going to be the old Coke, like our current Coke can on the side of the road. People are going to look back and be like, oh, shit, look what Coke cans used to look like in 2020. You know, the same way we look back at when, out in the woods when I find an old fucking Coors can with the pop top from however long ago or an old Rainier can. I'm like, oh, shit, this is what beer cans used to look like. No, I agree with you. There's just... From an engineering standpoint, there's just so much information being created and added that to sort through it all, to document it all, to understand it all from 500 years from now, I I don't know how you compress all that information to be learned. Like, how do you how do you on a large scale separate dumb satire comedy videos from actual factual information videos? Like, how do you? identify what videos are more important for a time frame versus not important it's it's a clusterfuck i i have no idea but luckily that's not my problem and for once nick ignorance is bliss and i'm on your on your side of the fence dude it's a great place to be i'm not gonna lie oh i feel fantastic (laughs) even people in our time can't tell what's satire and what's not I mean, you look at like uh, J.P. Sears videos. Sometimes people think that that's <laughs> it's comedy, but it's so close to being true that people think it's real. Do you remember I mean, people, when the onion used to? Th- when people think the onion used to be real? Oh, all the time. So how it's just it's crazy, and that's what I when I read a lot of shit about Rome and and first like what people wrote about it. It's always in the back of my head like. Is this someone fucking with this? And you look like we talked about in the border episode about how at Hadrian's Wall, a quarry that used to mine shit, there's a dick carved into the quarry. These are those same people. Our people, we, us, like humans. Are we just fucking with each other throughout this whole fucking timeline? I'm just imagining every Eddie Murphy movie in about 300 years from now being 
taken as actual documentation for how uh, Americans live in America during this time period. And it's, uh, boy, that's an interesting one. What about the life of Brian? Oh, God, yeah. It's, it's, knowledge is cumulative when it comes to history. And in the Dark Ages, we just didn't record it because we were going hand to mouth. But maybe we're in the Gibby and the other Dark Ages because we have so much information we can't filter it. Almost like the opposite end of the spectrum with the same result. Dark Ages, just we can't do any information because we're like, listen, we're starving to death. We don't give a shit about writing. Now versus now where we have excess materials, we're writing so much where everything, all the words are more meaningless. So it's, it's a, instead of a Dark Ages, it's a, white out of ages like it's just a flashbang just so much content so much things where it's just blinding it's white versus black it's it's a void versus too much light that's that could be a possibility i'm just glad i don't have to be the guy who's looking through you know you're looking looking through old records and you got cnn and comedy central and you're trying to figure out you know which one is is true that just seems like a lot of work oh or imagine like the data gets corrupted because no one's like updated the files so they have to blow off the they have to blow off some old pc that still has usbs and they have to plug it in and next thing you know it's got like a password protection or it's just someone's porn you stash. finally get to the video you finally get to it it's never going to give you up. Oh, God. The amount of Rick rolls someone. That's going to be someone's job in the future is to process all the Rick rolls. Granted, we probably can do it to just give it to AIs, but that's how that's how you get. Just cut out any video that was made right before Modern Warfare 2 came out. Well, I'm just thinking that's how you get the Terminator is they just have to just some AI has to listen to never going to give you up. 10 million times in a row they're like you know what human doesn't humans don't belong to exist on this planet anymore i don't agree with it but i do i mean that's fair (laughs) well that's pretty much everything i had that's all i have and my question to you the anyone listening is do you think we're in the dark ages and if so how do we get out in the dark ages and nick where can they tell us their answer you can find us on Instagram and Reddit. You can may or maybe not find us on Twitter. We'll see how the world goes. But out of curiosity, Nick, what books are you reading? I am reading Wood by Roland Enos about how trees changed civilization, humanity, built everything that we have. Uh, that being said, haven't had much time to read lately. But uh, the, it it is currently sitting on my nightstand, if that still counts. I am so glad we're in the same place. I am still reading Jami Fresh Lots by Xperia. I have not got the chance to read any of it. I have been extremely busy, so it has also been on my nightstand, unfortunately. Still would recommend if you like um, dystopian sci-fi books. This is definitely up anyone's alley. But with that being said... Hopefully, a new renaissance will arise, an age of new mountains. But until then, thank you all for listening. Thanks for listening to the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We rarely finish a podcast without missing a point we wanted to bring up, so let us know what we forgot. And if you have a topic you want us to talk about, let us know at Backyard Philosophy on Instagram and Backyard Philosophy Podcast on Facebook.